Let's talk about ESG criteria strategies to supersize and grow your business. Sharon Hornell from here. And this is a topic that I think I could sum up in a few words, but I'm going to describe it more because it was new to me. It's a different perspective and a different way of looking at how we structure and set up our companies from an investor's perspective, investment type criteria. ESG stands for environmental, social, and governance. And each of these things from the investor's perspective, if you've got them in place, make you more attractive as an, a potential investment. So if you ever want to go public, if you want to supersize and grow your business, I would recommend you build some of these things, if not all of them, into your strategies and your standard operating procedures and how you run your business. I could sum this all up with do the right thing and make the world a better place. Uh, if you've got that as your core principles and core philosophy and that's in your business somewhere, you're going to be automatically doing a lot of these criteria that are attractive to investors for your business. So what are some of these criteria? I'll share a couple of examples in each one of the three categories of, of and the things that they include for criteria. Then I will give you some, well, what, what's the advantage of doing this? Number one, it's a great way to attract investment capital if you want to expand and grow and supersize your business. If you've ever grown or are growing your business, you know that sometimes you need influxes of capital to do things strategically that will help move your business ahead faster. Uh, it enhances the financial performance of your business. They become cost effective. They reduce costs, increase efficiency, which is things that we should always be looking to do in our business. For example, if you do an energy e uh, efficiency program, or if you do something to reduce your carbon footprint, things like that, that are, are hot tickets in uh, government and politics these days, it gives you uh, advantages as well as governance reduces the possibility of regulatory fines because you're doing the right thing in the first place and it lowers capital costs, etc. So what are some examples in each of these categories? Because I didn't know what it meant. There's so many acronyms and so many uh, abbreviations in the world of business and in different industries. I was like, what the heck is ESG? I was working with an investment firm and I'm like, okay, well, let's talk about this. And it totally makes sense, especially where some things are popping up in politics nowadays. And guess what? As much as we don't like to think it and we don't have to express our individual opinions, politics and the environment and the economy all impact all of our businesses, right? Some more than others, depending on the sway of what's going on in, in our country and in the world or in where you operate your business. So environmental criteria, they look at a company's, and we should do this too, our steward of nature. And that's my, my easiest way of summarizing it. Are you a good citizen with respect to the global, to the world, the environment, uh, waste, pollution, natural resources, how you treat animals, uh, things like that all fall under this environmental criteria list of things. Uh, and I didn't look, there's probably, I, I didn't research this in depth, but there's probably an audit or a checklist for each of these three criteria that some investment friend of mine might have. I'm going to follow up on that, uh, that you can actually go through and check off and say, are we doing this for our business? Does it make sense? Could we incorporate this in our business to give us a slight competitive advantage or a huge competitive advantage? You know, the first one to do something in any category usually wins a percentage of the market. Uh, do you adhere to uh, stringent environmental standards for yourself to reduce your carbon footprint, to ensure that you have regulatory compliance? I don't know about you, but I always, in my businesses, make sure we are doing more than what is expected so I never have to worry about getting fined or in trouble or, or penalized for not doing the right thing. Uh, and again, it gives us a competitive edge. Investors favor people that do these things because to them, it means that you are probably more resilient and you're probably a better bet for their investment dollars than companies that aren't doing these things. Uh, social criteria encompasses things like the company's relationship with their employees, their stakeholders, their uh, customers, their suppliers, the people that... Uh, Oh, their communication style. How do they communicate with each of these stakeholders? And 
where they operate and how do they interact with the communities where they operate. Uh, it includes the company's policies on animal rights, human rights. I guess animals are environmental because that's with nature and uh, human rights and diversity, equity and inclusion, the big DEI thing that's going on right now. <clears throat> Consumer protection. These companies are viewed as by, by having things in place to handle all of those hot topics. And they've been, oh, uh, DEI is a new take on treating people with respect and not uh, treating everybody like they deserve to be treated. Wow. The whole golden rule thing again. Imagine that common sense in business. Uh, but these companies tend to be stronger according to investment organizations and investors because they treat people right. They do the right thing. They are, have a bigger uh, footprint on their communities and on the world than if they're not considering these things at all. So again, they tend to be more favored by investors because they have a stronger brand reputation. And that means they're more likely to be successful in the long term. Investors are looking for long term successful businesses to invest in. They're not looking for fly by night. Well, some I'm sure some investors are, but for the most part, it's just like we want to take a long term focus and perspective when we're building and growing and supersizing our business. Well, so do people that invest in us. So do our stakeholders. So do our vendors and suppliers. They, they want us to be doing the right thing and making the world a better place. So we're around for a long time. The final criteria category is governance. Governance means the leadership. How do you run your business? What kind of processes and procedures and controls do you have in place? What kind of systems do you have in place to manage different things? Uh, and how do you deal with shareholder rights? If you are a a publicly traded company or you have uh, shareholders in your business. Uh, robust government ensures that the structure of your organization, that there's accountability, that there's ethical business practices, uh, and you're more likely to avoid scandals as well as uh, fines or punitive damages or challenges in, in either the legal system or with government regulation and compliance. Uh, and that makes you a better a lower risk, a better investment to investors. So what's the business case? I think we already talked about this business case for uh, following and incorporating these ESG criteria into the way you structure your business and system is it attracts investment. Sometimes we need an influx of investment. It enhances your financial performance and it builds brand reputation. And people are becoming more and more socially conscious environmentally conscious and want to be treated fairly and with dignity and respect in all of their interactions, especially in the businesses that they spend their money in, spend their money on. Uh, some of the challenges to the ESG criteria are regulatory compliance. If there's a conflict between regulatory compliance and what is best for the world, guess what? Sometimes compliance is going to nick you uh, over what you think is the right thing, right? And then stakeholder engagement. Sometimes it's challenging to get your stakeholders on board with different policies and procedures and, and activities because they think it's more expensive. And some people are just about the bottom line. They just want the money, right? Uh, some strategies for effective ESG implementation. Set a clear goal. Set a clear ESG goals. Have goals and objectives. You don't have to do it all at once. But if you're just starting out, I say build these things into your business, just like you build processes and strategies in different areas for like your marketing and your every department that's a part of your business. You build things in to ensure your success and then you continually improve those processes. But you got to have objectives and goals set for each of those areas as well. Uh, embed the EGS into your corporate strategy and your uh in, in, in your standard operating procedures and just the way you do business. And again, do the right thing, treat people the way you want to be treated and make the world a better place. Boy, that's a much simpler, easier way of saying it than all of these EGS criteria. Although the, the more detailed criteria, ESG, I always say EGS because it's easier for me to remember. I even wrote it down wrong. That's so funny. Uh, we also want to engage our stakeholders. Everybody has to play a part and help with the success of our business, right? 
and that includes all of our stakeholders. If we're doing everything to be ESG compliant and we have one vendor or a couple of vendors or all of the vendors say, no, we're not going to do that. We're just, we're going to do what's best for us. We don't care how it impacts the world. That can be a problem. That can be a challenge. And then we want to leverage technology to help us with these things because they can be little things that we're missing and we want to use tech to help us find, discover, uncover, and continually improve our processes in every area. And this is no different. So love to know, have you done anything? Are you doing anything in your business for environmental, social, and governance? Share in the comments below so we can learn from one another. I know I am in the process of incorporating it into the businesses I work with and that I own to make sure that it's just a part of what we do. Like I said, we've already got the common sense way of doing it, but we'll go ahead and look at the criteria and audit ourselves for it as well. All right, have an awesome day, and I'll, of course, be with you tomorrow. Bye. Slow connection.